Sava Pukaya, Sava Pum, Nia Katera is calling, Nia Bira. Guide my footsteps for the good of our people. Sava Kashepat, Sava Pum. The people are calling, we are calling. All your people seek renewal. Renew our spirits, Sava Kashepat, all my relations. Who? Oh. Thank you. So what's the idea? The idea is to create public awareness around issues critical to society. And this presentation about, is about giving you clues as to ki the kind of issues that you might think are important in Trinity or regionally. So we're looking at things like water and energy conservation, climate mitigation, emergency preparedness, relief and recovery, and disaster response civic engagement, including the degree to which individuals feel comfortable being part of the census or voting, social justice and community engagement, public health awareness. So we're going to be introducing today a new tool that the state of California has passed down to us to use when evaluating the relative success of our projects at the end of the grant program. And it's called the California Healthy Places Index. While we look at these very broad based markers or indices, we're going to say to you, you know more about this than this map might be sharing with us. And we challenge you to create a case um, for others that you know are related to them. Please be aware that there are correlations between um, the composition of race and ethnicity in any given region of California and our health and well-being, and that those most vulnerable um, around which and who have most to contribute um, uh, are, are, we want you to pay attention. We want to see in your grant applications that you've shown an awareness for this composition. You know, you, you want to look at you know, the percentage of Native Americans and what possible projects can come in collaboration with, led by supporting of projects that, that, that serve these incredibly important First Peoples what are the markers? What are they looking at when they determine the relative health of communities? So that we're looking at economic factors, education, social factors, transportation, neighborhood health, housing, clean environment, and healthcare access. So the one way that it is really useful, we can see areas where uh, Trinity County scores high or low in particular indices, and that can help understand what we might be seeing in some of the tracks. Um, in this case, um, the county is pretty consistent. You know, I mean, it, there's there's a lot. So when we open that on up, but um, the lowest scores ended up uh, in employed, the employed for the county, economic, looked as well for education. Um, three um, of four of three out of four tracks were dark blue, which is the lowest quartile for education. So that's something we want to flag to look at. Healthcare access as well, quite low. That's 3.6 percentile means um, that there are 3.6 percent of counties in all of California that have a lower score than Trinity County. So let's just take a quick look at um, Weaverville for a second. So you can see how it's pale blue here, can't you? So if you were wanting to create a project that's specific to your little town, what you want to be doing is looking at these policy action areas that are in the lowest quartile, in the dark blue areas, in terms of how to make improvements. So the the two areas that it seems are pulling Weaverville, that's that particular tract into the into the darker blue regions, the least healthy regions, are the economy, the economic life and the social aspects. So if we dive into the economic side of things, we can see employment is an issue here. All these things are clues to projects that you can 
you can uh, develop and you can use this to, you know, to boost your, your application when it comes to it. So if the tribe, for example, wanted to work in collaboration with tribal members across the county line into Shasta, that might be an opportunity. Um, but we leave that to you. We're just sharing the opportunities for engagement. I really, really encourage you to think about who's not at the table, who's not in the room, who needs support, who have incredible access to the kind of creativity that we might not be aware of and that isn't, isn't here with us today. Um, all eyes are upon us. Think about however small or however large your project is that you're going to be proposing. Think of it in terms of becoming a gold standard, something, something you're so proud of has such meaning for your local communities that it can be replicated elsewhere, either by you or others. What would be a meaningful size grant for an individual artist if you want to do a residency in collaboration with an empty space, a business owner or a social service organization or a unit of government or an empty storefront? Obviously, for regional size projects that involve a larger number of artists in collaboration with a larger number of partners, those grants will be bigger education is so important. Our kids can't get to the education. So as educators, we need to bring the education to it. I do encourage the idea of intergenerational learning, although that won't be an, a be in an, a, a, you know, an eligibility criteria. It won't stop there, but it's great that you brought this up. Regarding the allocation of funds, I like the idea of a little heavier allocation to the darker blue I think that makes sense because we struggle so much and when things get chopped up 19 ways, it's not such a big number. I want to ask this group, how do we know who all is here and what we're doing? How do we share that information so that when we think about this and how to make a really strong application, how are we going to share that right now or, you know, like in the future? And that's what I think we could do. One of the things we could do moving forward from this. Remember, this is called a California Creative Corps, C-O-R-P-S. You are an army of artists. Together, you are stronger. You are better able with this advance notice to start mobilizing. So I say mobilize, mobilize, mobilize. In Hay Fork, we have an organization called Mountain Actors Workshop. And they were gifted one of the last historic buildings on Main Street in Hayfork several years ago. And it is an enormous restoration project. And it's an old theater. Here's what you need to do. Go away and find a, an army of artists. Talk to those artists with a view to employing them through a project that will revitalize and bring to life and create a community hub from that beautiful historic building. But I, I recommend if you were to write a grant application, already know who your artists are going to be or have a very clear sense so that it's not in any way vague because we really need to know that artists are the ones that are going to be benefiting and, and a key part and that is their vision that you're going to be working with, etc. Yeah, it seems like uh, we all together as artists and musicians uh, that we kind of have the answer already in front of us as far as uh, creating a festival of music, art, and education centered around, you know, ed uh, the local Native people here. Our part in, uh, in uh, creating an art uh, council type deal situation, what you guys are talking about, is we was we're working with the Trinity High School up here and putting in a, a, a club, an all Native American club for teaching them their cultural and stuff like that. Might I suggest to the Arts Council, it would be great to have um, perhaps a a roundtable discussion with your local tribe, um, and 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 brainstorm this because obviously we can't. There, there are probably factors that are, are sensitive and. We, it, it's almost like a meeting by itself. Would you be open to meeting with the Arts Council? We are. We're open to meeting with any group that's, uh, they can, that we can help with. We're hosting what they call Heritage Day here in Trinity County. We did it last year. We did it quite a few years before. Last year was the biggest year we had. We got it up off the ground. We plan on doing that again this year here. And we're, we uh, plan on, we're, 
now incorporating our uh, our tribal dancers, and then uh, we're incorporating uh, our artists. We have a an artist at Phil Owens or Phil Harper, who is a great artist. His his, his uh, brother is a great artist and travels overseas and everything with his art. I just want to say I think we mostly just have a communication issue. I've worked with the Arts Council for years. I teach classes. I now work with a nonprofit in Reading and teach classes for disabled veterans and disabled children. And I think there's just like a not a lot of communication on what counties or what towns need what kind of resources. In Nevada County, we have monthly creatives meetups and we rove around the place. We don't have them in one place. So we don't expect always people to come to us, but we go to this community or that community, this organization or that organization. And then one of the questions we ask is, we ask artists to put their hands up, tell us that they're there, tell everyone else that they're there, and what's the one thing they need at the moment. So keep asking each other what's needed, what do you have that I don't have, what do I have that you don't have. Um, it sounds amazing, just keep keep connected and don't give up. Now would that align with some of the goals of this grant? So you're looking at creating an awareness campaign with artists at the forefront, that's exactly what this program is about. So. Um, refine the narrative, start talking with artists who have similar interests and, um, and, and, you know, go for it. I've been thinking about doing a playwright festival for a long time and maybe having some sort of a, either a strong social justice or an environmental kind of theme to that and then taking one of those plays and then maybe performing them in empty storefronts or living rooms all around our county in kind of engaging the community as whole through a play. Within that economic development work, we kind of ran into something like what I'm hearing here where we have lots of great things going on and we're all just scattered. And so we're trying to bring that together. We're a, a nonprofit we're 100% volunteers, and um, our board members are aging. <laughs> and the uh, gallery's been, we took it over, uh, 10 women took it over from the um, Art Council. You've stated a need. You want a younger generation um, artists to come in and help curate and run the gallery. Um, if you are putting those artists to work and if you are somehow framing a project around an issue that is critical to society while you are putting those artists to work, maybe it can be a project. So don't give up on it. But I think that intergenerational thing, I couldn't agree with you more. It's like absolutely critical that you involve young people. In